What I want to talk today, talk about today is uh, relative major and minors. Now, every major chord that you play in a song has a relative minor. Every major chord has a relative minor, and it's really important to know their pairs. So, so we, what we're discussing is are these two chords A and its relative minor, F sharp minor. Now, how do you work it out um, that that the chords are related? So, for example, if you see an F sharp minor on a page and you're trying to work out its relative major, what you do is you do count up three semitones. So from F, from F sharp, you go one, two, three. Or you can remember this thing, up in the sky, up in the sky, and you get to A. Okay, so from F sharp, you go up in the sky, and you get to A, and that's its relative major. Now, what's the significance of that? So why do we need to know that? Well, F sharp minor, um, if you want to play, if you want to make your F sharp minor sound more modern, you can change it to F sharp minor seven. So that's more modern. It doesn't have such a, a minor sound, and F sharp minor seven is really played as can be can be played as A over F sharp. So if you see an F sharp minor on a page and you end up playing an F sharp minor like this, you can hear that the sound is sad. It's just a traditional minor classical kind of minor sound. But if you change that right hand chord to an A chord, you can hear it. It has a slightly brighter feel. It's not as sad. It has a more modern feel. And so that's an A chord, I can play it in root position. And that's F sharp minor seven. One, three, five, seven. Now, a good exercise is play a bunch of ba bars of A and F sharp minor together. So, you know, just do this over and over and see if you can come up with something interesting. So A going to F sharp minor. Something like this, use a dotted crotchet rhythm. So we're going um, one and two and three Four, then F sharp minor, I'm still playing an A chord so with some A2s. Back to my A. Now you'll notice I'm playing that B in there. So before we get too far ahead of myself, so let, let me explain to you the rhythm pattern that I'm using for those of you who are not familiar with this. So, so really I'm, I'm playing a dotted crotchet, one and two and three and four and. And on the four, there's another chord there. So, so we're doing um, an arpeggio on the left hand using my root and then the fifth and then the root again. So in an A chord, for example, I'm playing A, E, A. And in an F sharp minor chord, I'll play F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. So A, E, A for the first bar, then F sharp, C sharp, F sharp for the second bar. Now in the, in the A chord, the first chord I play might be, say, Let's say we do a plain A, C sharp, E. So we're doing a plain root position. Okay, so that'll be A, C sharp, E. But in the second, in the second uh, sort of voicing, I don't want to play exactly the same thing because I don't want to play that three times. So I'm just putting the major second in. I'm putting the two in there. So one and two and three and four. So this will be A, B, E, and that'll be A, B, E. Really, it's an A chord, but... But I mean, technically, we could call it an A2 chord, okay? Because it's got the B in there. B is the two of A. It's the second note in the scale of A major. So, by doing that, by doing that, it, it just sounds like something's changing in the middle of the bar. I can play it in a different inversion. I don't have to play it in root position like this A C sharp B. I can play it E A C sharp, and it would, and it would go like this: one and two. And then when I use that other rule that I said, when you see an F sharp minor, we count up three semitones up in the sky, an A chord is what I can play over an F sharp. So when I see that F sharp minor, I can literally play exactly the same thing in the right hand, but my left hand won't be playing A, E, A anymore. It'll be playing F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. So it'll now be going one and two and this is the first bar. Then I change my left hand and then back to the first bar. So as a good exercise, what I recommend you doing is do a little bit of this, change inversion. One. Try all the different inversions of A. We haven't done this one. Then mix it up. Now, it, once you get the hang of this, you can try uh, to vary the rhythm a little bit. 
break up some notes. Put in some fillers. After you do that enough, uh, you, you'll get thoroughly familiar with A, you'll start to associate the A with the F sharp minor. So every time you see F sharp minor, you're thinking A in the right hand, A in the right hand. And so you're learning your chords in pairs. And because there's 12 different keys on the piano, or in any instrument for that matter, um, you just need to learn 12 of these and you've knocked out all your majors and your minor chords and you've also learned some slightly cooler ways of playing your A's and your F sharp minor. Because for example, F sharp minor, when you play this, over an F sharp, that's a pretty cool chord. I mean, F sharp minor is really just that, that, and that. But but now we've got a B in it, we've got an E in it, so that's really F sharp minor seven with a B in it, and that's really F sharp minor 11, so, you know, it's a pretty fancy chord, F sharp minor 11. But we don't have to think about that, you just think about it as A2 over F sharp, so. progression over and over until you get really familiar with all the different ways of playing A and A2s in the right hand. 